Hi guys, Ariel with Ariel Paints. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to do this fun flamingo design. I think it's great for kids and adults and teens will probably like it too. I think the black adds a lot of sophistication to it and it's also pretty. So I uh, hope you guys like it. Before I get into the tutorial though, I need to give a shout out to my friend Zoe. Zoe, thank you so much for watching my videos. I just am so happy you like them so much. And maybe you can help me out. I heard flamingos are the new unicorn. So for 2019, is this what all the cool kids are gonna be asking me for? If so, could you let me know? And also, Zoe, don't forget to listen to your parents and go to bed on time, okay? Thank you so much for watching my videos. And now I'm going to show you how to do this very fun and pretty flamingo design. I've loaded up a petal sponge with Diamond Effects Pink Passion Rainbow Cake, which is a gorgeous pink range rainbow cake. If you guys don't have it, I highly recommend it. And I'm making sure to put the lightest color on the inside corner of the eye because that is going to brighten up the inside corner. And I'm also going to tap on some Mama Clown Fairy Dust Glitter, which is my favorite, favorite glitter. It is so pretty. And I'm going to do that just over the white so that I get a nice, shiny, bright inner corner for the eye. Now I'm taking a filbert brush loaded with a medium pink and white, keeping the medium pink on the outside. I'm just doing an oval for the head of our flamingo and I am tipping it down so that in the end the flamingo's head is pointed down towards my nose. From that oval I'm pulling an S shape down and connecting it to the lightest part of my eye makeup and then just really lightly blending it in. I've loaded up my filbert brush with pure white and I'm going to do the first part of the beak. I started just at the tip of my oval and now I'm just pulling down into kind of a fat teardrop shape and then I'm going to go back in with black on a number four low cornell brush and I'm just going to dry brush that black into the beak because I want that faded black to white and vice versa look that the flamingo's beak has. Now I also realized later I probably should have just curved it a little bit because flamingos do have that curved shape to the beak but oh well. No biggie. I was still really, really pleased with it. Um, but next time I do this design, I will, with the black, do a slight curve so that I have a more realistic effect. But you can see I have just a little bit of paint on my brush and I'm just lightly sweeping it into the white of the beak to create that illusion of the faded black to white beak. Now for the eye, I am trying to keep it very, very, very simple. I am just doing a curved line with some lashes at the top. Scooch in there so you can see a little bit better. And this is something that I do on peacocks. I will do this kind of eye on a unicorn if I'm in a pinch, just really, really simple. You can see I did an opposite shape of a curved line at the bottom and then just did a half round circle to create the eye. I wanted this to be very feminine with lots of lashes so I tried to emphasize those a little bit as well. I am now taking my favorite brush, my three quarter inch face painting shop, angled short brush that I love and a custom one stroke and I'm doing some drop petals down my face. So I'm starting at the corner of my eye and I'm just going to layer these up. I'm also going to do them at just the top of the body as well. So I give the feeling that the petals are starting on the back body of the flamingo and then going down my face. Now, if you guys want to know what is in this custom one stroke, watch to the end and I will go through it for you so that you can make your own if you want. I am absolutely in love with this one stroke. So, so happy I made it. It's exactly what I had in my head. So I was so pleased by it and I've been using it for lots of different things and it is perfect for my flamingo. So as you can see, I'm just layering up some petals on the top of the body. Now, 
I also think you could do this design with fewer petals than I end up doing and you could do the legs dropping down under the eye and do a couple crossed legs like one um, straight down and then another one kind of crossed to that V the way flamingos stand and I think that would be very cute too. So if I did that I probably would stop right about here with the petal slash feathers I'm creating and I would do the legs dropping down. But I wanted this to be an overly feminine, really dramatic design. So I'm going to overemphasize these petals slash feathers that I'm creating and I'm gonna pull them all the way down my cheek. You may also notice that there's an overall structure to the petals I'm creating. If you were to draw a line around all of these petals, you're gonna get a similar shape to the individual petal. So there is some structure to how I am arranging these. When you are layering something like this, you do wanna be conscious of that because it's gonna affect the overall design. So now for outlining, I am gonna outline this in black because I do want to have that stark contrast of the pink and the black. So I'm gonna start by outlining the head. And depending on who you are doing this on, you might need an outline or you might not. So depending on the skin tone that you're painting on and your time, I think that's gonna dictate whether you actually need to outline this design or you don't. I am obviously in my studio and I have plenty of time and I definitely think it's going to add to the drama of this design to be outlined, so I'm going to take the time to do it. So I went ahead and outlined all of the individual petals as well, and I do think it really helps them stand out. And I'm going to go ahead and throw on some eyeliner so that my eye looks a little bit more dramatic. And now I definitely want a stenciled element, but I'm not quite sure which direction to go or where to put the stencil. So I'm kind of going back and forth with myself. I love, love, love this tap stencil. It is 083. So I think I want that over the opposite side of my eye, but I'm also gonna go in with this BAM stencil that is a really nice dense texture, almost like fans, and it is 4016. So I started with the BAM stencil and I reloaded my petal sponge with that Diamond Effects Cake Pink Passion. And I went ahead and I did that on the opposite side. It is so hard to stencil on yourself, by the way. <laughs> I'm completely like blocking my eyes and I can't see anything. <laughs> so don't recommend doing it on yourself if you don't have to. So this is what it ended up looking like, and it's fine, but it's not enough drama for me. I wasn't really happy with it. I definitely wanted something to stand out a little bit more. So this is when I decided to go back to that tap stencil and to do black instead. Now, a lot of times when I am designing um, different face painting designs, I will paint them on myself a few times or I'll do design boards. This one, I had just mulled over in my head so many times and I just had to get it down. I had to paint it. So I am designing this as I go. All right, so I had that tap stencil on and I really wanted it to have a nice sheen to it. So I got this really, really dark purple fine glitter and before it dries and before I take the stencil off, I'm going to tap it really well, that wet paint with the glitter and pull it off and you get a really cool effect. So this is when I get the idea to grab my dagger brush and do some black lines and it all starts coming together. If you guys are ever in doubt, just grab your dagger brush and start making lines. I love my half inch dagger from the face painting shop. I use it more than the large dagger brush I have. So I started to create these very abstract lines and I started to come off of that tap stencil shape. Um, I did wipe away just a little bit of the pink cake that I put on there with the BAM stencil as well and I left it in kind of a sun shape. So there was some background pink and that black and I started to pull these lines with the dagger brush and this is where I started to fall in love with this design. 
the black and the abstract lines really added to the drama and it's exactly what I wanted to do that I had no idea I wanted to do. So this is kind of one of those happy things in designing something on the fly when it all comes together. But I do want you guys to understand that there's plenty of designs that I do that I wipe off. You know, designs that I have to try three or four times. Um, I think a lot of new face painters think that, you know, everybody sits down and just creates these amazing designs and they can't do it. That's not the case. And not to say this is the most amazing design. Other people could improve this a thousand times more than I could. But I just want you guys not to get discouraged because creating designs is really, really difficult. And the face is a hard canvas. It is not a big white square. So painting on people, painting on yourself, it's really difficult. So please give yourself some room to fail and just learn from it. So I felt like this was a really, really happy, fun kind of experiment for me to do. I had a lot of fun creating this. And as you can see at this point, I'm just playing. I'm just pulling these black lines around. I'm pulling them back behind my flamingo and I am having so much fun and I really, really loved the way this turned out. I was so happy with it. And what I ended up doing is really simple. I'm just pulling abstract lines around and through. I think it created a really interesting design and I love the glitter on that top stencil as well. So I hope you guys like it and I hope it's something you can use on the job. Um, if Zoe tells me that flamingos are the hot new thing, I want to be prepared because I didn't have a flamingo design. So that is why I created this. So please comment down below. Tell me if you guys have been getting requests for flamingos. And then as always, if you guys try this, please tag me. I love it when you guys tag me in my designs and my designs are meant for you guys to use and copy on the job. That's what my channel is about. So don't ever, ever hesitate to use one of my designs. I make them for you guys. So now that I am happy with all of my black lines and the way that is tied together, I am going to add just a few white highlights on my flamingo. I am doing a highlight and some dots on each of my petally feather shapes. And then I'm going to add some really tight clusters of white dots in the larger lower portions of my abstract black lines. And my goal here is just to add to the ornateness and overall detail of the design. So I'm doing it rather quickly and it wouldn't take too much time on the job, but um, I do think it adds a nice element. And I did notice that I have like a black smudge over my eye that the peacock is not on. So when I'm talking through this video, I did notice it. So please just forgive me. I did not see it and I did not wipe it off before I was done filming. So ignore that. I hope you guys like this design. I was really, really pleased with the way it turned out and I am very happy that I now have a flamingo that I can use on the job. If you liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. It actually helps me out and I love creating free content for you guys. So the more likes and subscribers I get, the better. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Ariel Paints and stick around and I will show you how to make that custom one stroke. I want to show you guys the custom one stroke I made. So if you want to recreate it, you can. It is a fluorescent or neon orange, white, fluorescent or neon pink, a strip of red, and then brown. And I created just a sample of this. So just a small little cuts off of my paint to see if I liked it. I love it. It's great. It makes amazing flowers and roses. So I will be making a large one of this. But if you're not quite sure about a one stroke that you kind of think you want, do a small sample. And that way you can also remove a color and add another color in and just test them out. I will be making a large one of this because I really like it and it's perfect for my flamingo. So if Zoe ends up telling me that flamingos are the thing for 2019, then I'm going to have to make a large one of this, right? So that's what I used for um, this, but you can absolutely use any pink or light pastel-y, you know, uh, one stroke that you have in your kit. So not necessary, but in case you guys want to create it, that's what I did.